What's up? Welcome back to Nostalgia. Dave here with a review of Winning Time Season 2 on HBO. Very excited for Winning Time to be back in our lives. I loved Season 1. Of course, it's the story of the Showtime Lakers, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, with a, I think, a really awesome mix of excellent casting, period detail, and like real like genuine, like strong TV filmmaking flair and production value. Love the show. Back for season two. Can't wait, because there's a lot more to this story. You know, season one, wrapping up with the Showtime Lakers winning their first championship in 1980. And of course, we know that this is just the beginning, as the Lakers and Celtics, Magic and Bird, that rivalry is just at the surface, just at the beginning. So there's a lot to get into here. And season two doesn't really waste any time. Interestingly, though, it starts off with a flash forward all the way to 1984 NBA Finals Game 1, where the Lakers uh, steal a game from Boston in Boston. And it's like, huh, we're kind of skipping ahead a little bit. They immediately back us up four years, back to 1980, in the aftermath of the first Laker ring. And it's like, okay, so like it seems like we're building up to 84, so we're going to go through a few years now, skip some time, whereas Season 1 was really just about the build up to 80, the first really about one real season. Seems like we're skipping ahead a little bit. I'm kind of interesting, interested why that is, because Winning Time as a series has the potential to be much more of an anthology. You know, if you want to skip ahead and leave the Showtime era behind, move on to, you know, the Kobe Gasol run, or of course Kobe Jack before that. Like, there's potential to switch up what Winning Time is. You know, it's on HBO. Seems like it's an expensive show to make. I'm, I'm had in the back of my mind, I wonder if this is something like David Zaslov would and Warren Bros. Discovery would love to like cut and like not continue. But hopefully HBO will protect the show and keep it going because there's a lot of meat on this bone, and I think it's done really well. You know, a lot of controversy with season one with Jason Clark's portrayal of Jerry West, and in general, there's a lot of just talk about the accuracies that this show has. Of course, it doesn't present itself as a documentary. It does things for creative license. It makes composite characters, etc. It fledges a timeline. Of course, Jeannie Buss is much more involved in the show's timeline than she was in real life at the time with similar events. Yada, yada. It's fine. I find it very compelling. I'm cool with it. But I'll be interested to see if there's any like additional controversy about the show. Or if like it's just going to be the same people kind of whining about the same stuff. I'm not sure. But, I mean, the core tenets remain, though, right? Like, Quincy Isaiah as Magic Johnson is, is spectacular. You need to nail that casting, because Magic was such a big character, obviously still to this day. And they did that. He's great. John C. Riley as Jerry Buss, Dr. Buss, the owner of the Lakers. Great. Awesome casting. Really nails it. Nails that persona that you know, Buzz, Dr. Buss had as a philandering, but also really sharp businessman. Uh, Adrian Brody really coming into his own. Pat Riley with the flash forward in episode one. You see the slicked back classic Riley hair, the look we know. Um, really like him. Uh, Tracy Letts was Jack McKinney in season one. I don't think we're going to see him again, obviously, if the story's going, but he was awesome. Jason Siegel, though, really fun as Paul West. I don't know if these are accurate portrayals, but I don't really care because the show is really compelling to me. Hadley Robinson is Jeannie Buss. I really like her. Gabby Hoffman is Claire Rothman. Awesome. Solomon Hughes, also really great as Kareem. You know, again, like Magic, you had to nail how Kareem was done. A, a person who had so many multitudes to his life. And if you didn't nail that casting, Kareem would come off as a bit of a caricature. But I think they really kind of nailed that. Shout out to Solomon Hughes for that. Molly Gordon's on this show, you know, kind of in the Jeannie orbit part of the, part of the series. I'm curious, like, how involved she would be i'm not really sure um but obviously we know she's quickly rising which theater camp and the bear season two so if you get more of molly gordon it'd probably be good for the show we'll see but um and yeah like the filmmaking obviously it's a period show which makes it look nice anyway but you have like really cool like you know switches of film stock and aspect ratio and like color grading and stuff it's really stylized it looks really awesome um I'm really looking forward to the rivalry with the Celtics. You know, Michael Chiklis is Red Auerbach, who we saw back in season one. Larry Bird is really portrayed as this kind of like, uh, you know, dipping hick uh, 
you know, uh, Midwestern white man. It's really funny. Like, I don't really care how accurate it is to Larry Bird. I, we know he did drink. I don't really care. It's funny. Like, and obviously in the, in the flash forward scene at the beginning of this episode, they show uh, the Boston crowd is this rowdy, like mad, you know, mob, which is hilarious. Um, curious to see the dynamic with the bus family portrayed more in season uh, two. Obviously, we know that the bus boys, Jeannie's brothers, were going to be more involved. And I think anyone who knows the story knows that they were not uh, as competent as their father or their sister when it came to things of this nature. So interesting. Also, like for NBA fans, it's really funny to hear like bus talk about like being ahead of the curve with like cable and ESPN in terms of like the, the, the mainstreamization and the blowing up uh, publicly of the NBA that's about to happen. And also the salary cap coming in and free agency changing and bus wanting to get ahead of uh, the increase in player salaries and locking up his players with extensions. But of course the Lakers at this time had to actually figure out where the money was, the tangible money to make these payments. Like it's, it's, it's pretty interesting to see all that. Um, it's fun. Kareem has the kid. I think that um, I, mean, I believe that must be accurate, but yeah. Um, in season one, you know, set, you know, sorry, episode one of season two sets us right up with this, you know, 81 season where Magic Johnson has, I believe, a knee injury and like devastating knee injury. And the Lakers now have to, uh, you know, right the ship or just hold on to the wheel until Magic can come back so they can hopefully get into the playoffs and then still make a championship run. And if you know what happened in that season, of course, Magic's recovery time specifically, maybe this won't be as suspenseful, but I think it's just a really fun dramatization. And, you know, Quincy Isaiah being a ladies' man, as Magic, of course, was, it's pretty fun. I guess, like, one thing that's, like, kind of so-so for me is, like, Magic's, like, will will they, won't they, with his, uh, at this time in the show, a strange girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, Cookie. I think most people know that Magic Johnson ended up marrying and is still with his loving wife, Cookie. They have kids together, like, that's, like, not super suspenseful to me. I guess it's fine. I don't know. But yeah, I, I just really enjoy the show. And I feel like it's kind of odd that it's coming out in, like, the dog days of summer in mid-August amidst the writer's strike as well. So, like, I feel like there's no buzz about this show. You know, like, when it came out, and season, season one came out, it was, like, you know, March, April time, I believe. Like, definitely people were more locked in on new release at the time. Feels like it's kind of being sent out when there's not a lot of attention for it. So hope that's not the case, and I hope that the ratings still deem it successful enough that they can keep the show going, because I think this is a really a kind of endless potential with a show like this. It's just really enjoyable, and I'm also someone who doesn't care about the inaccuracies, so I just really enjoy the ride. But yeah, when you time season two, I'm expecting it to be a lot of fun, even if maybe it won't be quite as fresh and new as season one was, which is like a really like awesome, like blast of like wow this is like a really like developed idea with all these things humming even if that won't feel as new this time around i'm happy to still be in this world of you know the 80s lakers versus celtics nba quite quite fun but let me know how do you feel about the start of wing time season two or is there something you're looking for that for season two the again season one and yeah for more tv reviews subscribe and i'll see you next